Okay, so I graded week 10 learn together and I had a request, so I'm going to handle that. I'd already been thinking about it. So Naomi, thank you for asking. Uh, in your reply, you were asking maybe it would be helpful um, to go over my output and I'll do that here. And there was some really good examples last night of people approaching this. Um, Andrew's was excellent. Um, I really liked Andrew's approach here and I know you, most of you looked at it. And instead of going to a separate page, he updated the DOM directly here, which is a fun way to do it as well. As long as it meets the requirements, I'm good with that. So look at, you know, and it really helps to look at everybody's example. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is week attendance, week 11 attendance. So we're in the week before we head out to break. So what I thought I'd do is use my week 11 output as a way to walk through at least some of the code that's used to generate the output of what we're doing, right? So we're... Uh, let's just do it. So I'm going to right click, inspect. I remember this is also part of what you need to do for your dev one is know how to do this. So the more you see this, maybe the more comfortable you'll get here. So what I'm going to do is now that I'm here, uh, one thing I can already see, and I want you to know this, and I'll, this is a review, but application, if I go to local storage, that should have been, let me refresh real quick. Oh, there it is. So they actually changed that, I guess, because before if I just clicked on it. So what this shows me is that inside local storage, there is uh, another kind of in uh, list in here. So the reason this is here is if I have other uh, apps that are using local storage because I'm running Git hack, that's where it's running out of. So in this case, I can see that this, um, render of this page is actually rendering once it's uh, pulled out of local storage this item. Now, how do I know that? First, I can walk through the code, but I can also just hit X here, which deletes this. So if I delete this, I refresh. Uh, this no longer renders anything, which maybe what I would want to do in my code is actually put something here that says no data yet. But I'm going to do this. I'm going to go ahead, now that you see that, and we can come back and look at it if we have time. I'm going to come down to my JS file. And in here, I ended up simplifying my file names, putting it in a JS directory. I did do some CSS. I won't go over that here. But in my app file, that's pretty short. All I have is getting the request. So I'm going to set the breakpoint right here because this is really where it starts by going out to look at local storage to see what's there and bringing back uh, request, meaning returns it. So if I do this, I put that breakpoint, I hit refresh. What happens here is it still renders this page, but it stops right here on the load of the JS. And now I can walk through this code. So what I'm going to do here is call get saved request. And if I hit step, it is located in that functions JS. So now my dev tools pulls that up. It runs this function. I'm not passing anything into it. It's saying define a variable called, in my case, I call it request. We've seen it called notes. We've seen it called to do's. Um, but it's called a request JSON because when it goes to look at local storage, it says get an item called request. And in this case, because I know the key, the item I want called request, it's going to go out there and look at it. When it runs this step, because I just cleared it, that's going to be null. There's going to be nothing in there. And then it says, if this, right, not equal to null, which means there was something in it, then I would do the parse. And the reason you're doing parse, and I'll just do this real quickly, is that when you're storing data in a local storage, right, uh, the parse takes and it, uh, takes a JSON because in local storage it stored as JSON and it converts it into a normal JavaScript object. Which when I, I remember first reading the idea of the difference between JSON and a JavaScript object, because to me they seem the same, but they're not. So you have to convert between a JSON um, data structure into what we use inside of JavaScript. So that's why that step is done.
right? But it's asking the if, because if there's nothing in there, then it's just going to return an empty array. But if there is something, then it's going to parse that and return that. Okay, so in this case, what will it return is an empty array because there were no requests. Okay, and now I'm returning. Let's get back here. And so now I can see that that is an empty array, which makes sense. If there's no data, then just do that. Okay, and so now my um, in here, I would just step through here. And now this is just a an event listener on this button. So because I didn't break in here, all it did is it ran, it loaded into memory so that when I do do something, I am listening for an event on that button, then it'll run this code. But the next thing it does is actually goes out and renders that stimulus data based on this globally defined request. Now, because there's nothing in there, there's nothing that's going to render to the screen, but it still walks through. If I step into it, I can see that it's going to call, pass this request. It's going to clear whatever was in there before because this function is, is run various times during my app. And then it's going to do a for each, right? But in this case, there's nothing in there, right? So it's just going to pass control back and now it's done loading the page. Okay, so it's actually done. So if you see this content script, that just means it's done. So if I want to really look at what's going on inside the app in more detail, I'd probably want to put my breakpoint here. Okay, and so in this case, let me just go ahead and re-render the page. Now, nothing stops on the page because this is just code, this event listener that runs once I hit submit. So I actually have to enter data into here and I'm just going to enter some random data. And as soon as I hit submit, because this event listener is listening on the form element. Okay. So as soon as I hit this, now it's going to hit this breakpoint. It's done the event default, which says, you know, prevent that from happening. I'm going to set up a local very uh, a local object in this function called request. I'm going to uh, my key and my values, filing status, adjusted income, and number of children is going to be, and I do mine a little differently than Andrew did, but I basically say look at the form element, pull the first entry. Again, you can do this, you can do, and you don't have to do this because you can absolutely do e.target. Why, you know, and I may, you might wonder, well, then why didn't I do elements, right? Because I could. I just wanted to do it a little differently, like playing around with just another way to do it. I, I, the question might be which is best, but I won't go down that rabbit hole right now. So I set up the request by pulling the values that are in these um, uh, inputs. Now, in this case, I did do some validation from a JavaScript perspective or CSS perspective. But, um, and I did do the required so that they can't just hit submit without some feedback going to the user. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually call determine amount uh, passing in that object called request that has these three fields. So now if I just, and, and by the way, this uh, code is what I've been kind of having since pretty much the second week. So if I just step into this, I can see I'm passing. And now what I called request, I'm actually calling input here. I could have still called it request, but I decided to call it input. I set up a variable. I do the logic, right? I do determine, and by the way, this is the new stimulus. And then I return just the check amount, right? So remember when I had this input right here. So, and by the way, again, this is where your dev tools, if you, if I just typed input, you could actually see uh, what is actually in there, but you can also see this by looking here in dev tools. Okay. To see, I have an object, it's got three key value pairs in it. And then I use those key value pairs of input filing status, input number of children to figure out to determine the check amount. Okay, so I can just walk through that and based on my input. I can also see based on the inputs is which branch of my logic would that hit. 
I'm going to step into and now I'm returning. So now I have a variable that is an object inside of my function, which is based just an event listener. And now I can use that to say that request that I set up before, just add the check amount as a key value into that. Okay. So let me walk through that step. And so again, if I wanted to look at that request now, I would see I now have a new key value pair on it. That is the check amount. And now what I do is I use that UUID that I um, reference from inside of my, by loading it inside of the index file, I can now just call that UUID for, set up that request or set up that number. And again, I wouldn't have to look at this code. I could just jump over this and kind of say, get out. And now I am back. And I can then look at that request again to see that in addition to the check amount, I also have now the UUID. And so now what I'm going to do is because when I'm updating this, you, uh, sorry, when I'm doing the save, and actually I may have jumped over that, now I'm calling saved because I've updated my request now, okay? So now my request, which was that empty variable before that was created here, uh, I now have not something in there, right? So I actually have that, the request which is all the requests, only in this case has one, but I have to save that into local storage, okay? So if I run this function, this is where I take in that request, however many there was, in our case only one, I actually set a variable on local storage, right? And I call it request, again, you can call it whatever you want. And this is what I call JSON stringify, so it's just the opposite of parse. So this takes, the JavaScript object and converts it into a format for JSON because that's what local storage needs in order for it to store it in its system, okay? So then that's all that function does. Now, I could actually stop right here because now if I come over here, I can see that in the local memory of this computer, I have now stored this JSON object in the local storage okay so that's what that step is doing right that's what that step right here is doing so now that i've done that now my requests that are out here instead of being empty have something in them okay so i've saved it save request okay good and you might wonder, how does this get updated? It's because it's a pass by reference idea. And this is something I talked about in week 11 that you're going to see coming forward. Okay. So now I'm going to call that same render, right? And so now when I call this render, so the nice thing about having a render function is you can call it at various stages or various places anytime you want to re-render to the screen. So now I'm going to hit step in. And so now I'm passing in, instead of an empty array, I'm passing in an actual object, an array of objects, in this case, one object. And I'm just going to step through, first it's going to clear. And the reason, again, we're doing that is because there may have been something in there before. I'm going to do a 4H, which is going to loop through. And then it's going to say it's going to pass in all the requests, but on a for each, for each one of them, then it's going to call request object to pin. But before it appends anything, it's going to call another function called generate request DOM and passing that individual request. So I'm going to go ahead and step into that, which calls this function. Again, this is a little, you know, keeping track in your head that even though it says request, there's only one in there. There could be, of course, multiple. So but for this one, I'm going to create an element, a P element called new P, create element, I should have called that thing better, an A uh, for a, a link. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm going to create a button. So let's just kind of walk through those. And now I'm going to create an event listener. Okay. And this is where I actually ended up creating an event listener so that I could delete 
um, remove one of my requests. It's the idea of when I'm doing the CRUD operation. So I'm doing an event listener inside of this create DOM that will allow when it renders to the page, it's also to have a button that has an event listener on it. Okay, I don't know why I did click there. I was just playing around and didn't remove it. So I said, so when this button actually gets clicked on, then it's going to run the remove request, passing in the request ID. It's going to save the request because it's removing it out of local storage. And then it saves the request, which updates the requests that are in memory. And then it renders that as soon as somebody hits that delete button. So let's just go ahead. That's what that step does. It, it updates the text of the button to have an X in it. It sets an attribute of the A ref to actually edit. This calls the edit page. So it does an A tag, which A ref then ref, uh, gives a reference to the edit page with a pound here passing in that UUID. And that's what it uses when it calls the edit page or when it click when you click on it when you do the a ref uh, uh, action to pass that q request id in and we'll see that in a minute and then it appends to this new element the button it appends the new element and then it returns that p so it does all this wrapped in a p tag and again this is where you can decide how you want your output to look if you want to use other elements other html elements so let's go ahead and stop into this so now it's done all this work to set up that entry that you'll see in a minute okay and again it's doing it from the request and so now when i return that gets returned instead of because this just called it so get what gets returned is the new p and that's what gets appended into the child so we go back cool cool I'm trying to figure out why it's not there yet oh yeah so just i was thinking it would go immediately but now so now we see that that is rendered into the page coming back here right as soon as and i was expecting it to do this but it just took another you know stepping into for it to see to actually append that request el is if you look in my index file you'll see that i've uh, put an id here and this aside is just because of the way i did the css right so does that help that's my question to you is does this help i didn't go over and i can do this in another week if you want maybe this one's long enough but in this case um oh and i didn't even look at that so let's actually go look at what i did render i actually just set up a string and i just said uh the new element content is actually going to be equal to whatever remember it's the individual requests that are passed in right so if I was to do this, let's just go over here. If I had X, that would run this event listener code here. But I could, I'm not sure why, let me just do this real quick. So then if I did head of house, I did, I just do this, right, boom. So then I would see, because I've processed that next request, right? So my requests now have two entries in them. And again, just to complete, when it did, when it ran the page, when it re-rendered the page, it picked up in the function in the app.js here, right? Because it reloads this, it goes out to get those requests, which pulls in now my new entry uh, into the um, memory of the computer by pulling from local storage, meaning running this get saved request, what comes back is my request. And really what it's looking at is what's setting over here in local storage, which we know is in this case, two entries, two objects in that are each, the whole thing is an array of objects. Anyway, thanks for the question. I hope that helps out. Uh, let me know in your reply if this helped cleared up anything or if you have more questions uh, that I could attempt to answer.
Thanks. And um, I think that's it. We'll be talking about probably in week 12 more of the schedule for the dev one. Have a good one.